It's Chongli time, everybody. She has been a nightmare and a half to raise, just mainly due to the fact we have no money. <laughs> In fact, she's still not done and we still have no money. So there's gonna be a little bit of farming here, mainly just for some shell credits. Yes, indeed, that should be enough to finish her weapon. I do also want to raise her skills a bit more to at least get her closer to on par with Jinchi because, I mean, Jinchi is the most recent character besides Chongli, of course, and they're both, I would say, classify as damage dealers. Yeah, she can do what she needs to do quickly and swap off, but I think right now, in the current state of the game, there's no one that pairs perfectly with her. I'm not going to be comparing them super heavily because, spoiler alert, I don't think she's quite as good as Jinchi, but to be honest, that's not saying much because Jinchi is absolutely cracked. I definitely think she's good though, up there with the best, with a lot of potential for the future, perhaps when we get a really strong sub fusion DPS or just another main fusion DPS, then she could really support them. But yeah, I believe Chongli is going to be one of those characters that's good for now and has the potential to be incredible later. I would like to get a resonance skill and forte circuit to at least eight. I believe these are the two most important. I farmed so many of these materials and we are completely out. So we'll need to do a little bit of that as well. But like with the gold farming, I will keep this relatively short. Yeah, I feel like we probably have enough weapon materials, but these rings, I was farming them a lot yesterday, but it wasn't enough. So about 20 minutes of pure exile farming later, let's see where we're at. Nine gold for the entire thing. How many of the gold weapon drops can we make? Cause we only need those anymore now as well. Five, actually, I think we're pretty close on weapons. So let's see, we can get the crit right here, but now we're out of gold. Residence Liberation just needs some gold, like one run. So I guess I could do that. Also, we have the ability to get her up to S2, but we're not gonna do that for this showcase. We'll have one final showcase a little bit later. Now that she's about as good as I can make her for now, let's go ahead and talk about how she works. She's actually pretty simple, so I'll keep this short. Her basic gameplay loop involves getting four stacks of inflamement, which is the name for her energy above the HP bar, and doing a heavy attack. You get inflamement with two different basic attacks, True Sight Conquest and True Sight Charged. These are attacks that happen when you're in True Sight mode, and you can enter True Sight mode in a couple of different ways. Firstly, her skill. Once you do that, you're in True Sight mode, and the next basic attack is either True Sight Conquest or True Sight Charged. Conquest if you're on the ground, and Charged if you're not. Both give you one of a max four stacks of inflamement. You can also enter True Sight mode with her intro skill, saving a charge of her resonance skill, which is good. Again, first basic attack after intro skill gives you one inflamement. Finally, her full basic attack chain. After part four, you'll also enter True Sight and the next basic attack will give you a stack. Once you have all four, you can unleash a special heavy attack for very good AOE damage. Her ultimate or resonance liberation is just a big AOE burst of damage, but also totally fills your inflamement stacks. So it's quite nice as well. Just make sure to use it before you start stacking the inflamement. Moving on to build, we of course do have her signature. I usually do try to stick to a more free to play weapon, but I mean for Wuthering Waves, I haven't been doing that so far anyway, so I don't see why I would start with Chongli now. Besides that, I don't have any raised and any resources to raise any, though I do want to talk about more free to play options. Emerald of Genesis, which is the one standard five star sword we have, while not as good as Blazing Brilliance, is still a pretty solid general sword that anyone can use strongly included. As for four star swords, I'd say Commando of Conviction is far and away her best weapon. Attack percent main stat, 15% when using intro skill. 15 seconds should be plenty of time for her to go back off field. Lunar Cutter could be a good option as well if it's higher rank than your Commando of Conviction. Finally, Sword of Night if you have nothing else. Moving on to the Echo Build, in my opinion, there is only one correct set and that is five piece Molten Rift. It's basically just 40% fusion damage. Unfortunately, the uh, five piece set is only after doing skill, so it might not apply to that first ultimate, which is a bit sad, but after that, you should have it pretty much permanently. I'm mainly talking about Tower of Adversity here where you actually start with the ultimate, and in that case, of course, you should use it first to get all the inflamement stacks. If you're really struggling with Echoes, you can go two-piece Molten Rift and two-piece Lingering Tunes, just gives you 10% attack. It is quite a bit worse, honestly, but it's still better than like four-piece Molten Rift. <laughs> you know, you're getting that 10% attack there at least. We are going Inferno Rider for our cost four because we do 
do not have a choice. So also, you know, 44111 build doesn't work so well unless you're planning on going two piece, two piece, which early game, if you don't have mini echoes is an option for everyone except the super, super in game. I'd pretty much always recommend crit rate here, even if you have her signature, cause that has crit damage on it. Once I actually do activate her sequences and we get her up to S2, I most likely will swap this out with a crit damage though, because she gives me 25 crit rate. Main stats for cost three is generally going to be double fusion, but if you have her signature, you have a bit more flexibility. You can go double fusion. That's going to be good. You can also go one fusion fusion one attack. That's also good. There is so little difference between the two mathematically. If you don't have her signature though, I would stick to double fusion unless you just got an amazingly cracked attack piece with, you know, insane substats. Cost ones, of course, attack percent. Substat wise, it's pretty much the same as most other DPSs and especially Jean Chi. We mainly want to see crit rate, crit damage, and attack percent. Though flat attack, resonance, skill damage, and energy regen are also good stats for her. Our overall stats we're currently rocking with 2400 attack, 120 energy regen honestly should be enough. Like her ultimate is super important, but it's not as expensive as Jean Chi's coming in at 125 versus her 150. As usual, crit ratio, you want to try and have a one to two ratio after you knock hundred off the crit damage. So we should preferably have closer to 73 crit rate with the amount of crit damage we have. So unless I can get a lot better echoes, I'll probably just leave her in this build when I get her to S2. Speaking of constellations, S1's not that great. S2 is very good. It's basically 25% crit rate. S3 is just okay. It won't increase her overall damage that much. S4 is definitely pretty solid if you have her in, you know, a multiple DPS team. Here on S5, since we actually have the multiplier being increased by 50% and its damage being increased by 50%, uh, S5 is actually pretty huge. This is, I think, the biggest DPS increase so far. And then S6 is absolutely nuts. Basically, everything she does that deals damage will ignore an additional 40% of the target's death. Insanely stupid S6, but it is S6. Stopping points, in my opinion, are S0, which I think is fine, S2 or S6. We did talk about skill priority a little bit, but just while we're here, skill is number one. This is what she's doing the majority of her damage with. Forte circuit number two and resonance liberation number three. I'd say normal and intro are roughly similar, but I wouldn't invest too heavily in them unless you just have resources to burn. So yeah, I'd say good old showcase time and good old tower of adversity. I have been primarily using this team, Verena, Yinlin, and Chongli. Verena, just because she's still the best, you know, healer support. Yinlin buffs ultimate damage, which Chongli does a lot of and Chongli also buffs ultimate damage, which Yinlin can do a lot of. The issue is I'd much rather use Verena and Yinlin with Jin Shi because Jin Shi is a bit more picky with her teammates. She practically needs coordinated attacks and both of these guys can do that. So when we're talking about general content, I think this team would be great. But when we're talking about Tower of Adversity, where you can only use certain characters a certain amount of times, I wouldn't take Verena and Yinlin with her because at the end of the day, I still do think this is my best team. Since I still don't have three full teams raised, I can't completely clean out uh, Tower of Adversity. So I don't really see the point of trying to do Hazard Tower, even though it was funny that I had to spend like four hours on it last time. In Echoing Tower on the right here, we do have a fusion damage bonus. So I think this would be the appropriate place to try her. And the level 90 dude at the end is no joke. Like it is actually difficult. The problem is outside of Yinlin and Verena, I'm not sure who to take with her. I don't have Encore. My Rover's not raised. So I guess we're gonna do something a little wacky and take Mortify. Like he can do some okay damage with his coordinated attacks. Unfortunately, Chongli doesn't do that many basic slash normal. So we'll see how this goes. Floor one so far is not going <laughs> that, that fast. It took us about a minute. And uh, I mean, we did get like an 80K burst there at the end, which is decent, decent. Obviously I'm used to like Jin Shi's 200Ks by now, but I will be interested to see if we can actually beat that level 90 boss though. This isn't the last, oh, okay. I, I don't know what was up with floor one, but floor two was done in like 20 seconds. There's also not too much to see right now, which is why I'm cutting most of it out, but yeah. Okay, we're, we're getting absolutely toasted. Let's go and get that shield from uh, Jian Shin. Um, okay, that was bad, but we do have a shield now. Let's go ahead and head to Mortify, get his burst back. Hopefully we can get Concerto pretty quick here. Okay, now it's her time to shine here. Uh, we're gonna hopefully get those stacks really quick before we do burst. There we go, we can do the charge attack and then burst and then we should be able to do another charge attack here. We have pretty much no buffs right now or very few buffs, but it, it, it still did a good amount of damage. We're gonna do that, wait for the third strike, go back to Mortify. This boss was already pretty hard. I'm a little bit worried about floor four here. Yeah, we got Scar, but we only have his final phase. We uh, were too slow with that. Okay, Christ. This is gonna be fun. Yeah, 
I'm not sure about this one, to be honest. I mean, just time-wise, we only have 30 seconds left and he's only half dead, so... I remember how impossible the ape looked when we were playing with Jinshi, but we could eventually do it. Yeah, I'm not sure how we're doing worse this time, but we have like 14 seconds and he's still nearly half alive. Out of curiosity, I do want to try it with Verena and Yinlin just to see if it really makes that big of a difference. I imagine it will, but right now it actually feels impossible, so... We'll see. Granted, I only tried three times, but like, I would say on the third one, I, I wasn't that bad. This guy hits so freaking hard. It's crazy, dude. Also, I guess it's pretty much the same case with like uh, Jean Shi in that if you have an intro skill, you should probably use it on Chong Li because then she gets like one of those stacks. And we're out of time. Definitely closer. And that was like, I made a lot of mistakes that time. So I think the team is definitely better, but I need to get a little bit warmed up here. Ah, uh, okay. 10 seconds over. I don't know, man. This guy is just kind of insane, I think. Jesus Christ. Another thing I'm messing up a lot is doing uh, Chong Li's skill as soon as I swap into her, which is bad because she's already in true sight mode or whatever. So I'm basically skipping a stack of inflamement. This is basically muscle memory from playing with Jin Shi so much because with her, you do do E as soon as you swap in. Yeah, this guy's like never not attacking. So I feel like I just have to spend most of the battle uh, dodging and I can't do anything. I mean, we got closer now. Still about 10 seconds over, but he was like almost dead. Definitely surviving a little bit easier with Verena, of course, being a good healer, but damn, it's still tough. Yeah, um, this one may have been worse. Like best case scenario, have the inflamements filled. You can do the charge attack, burst charge attack, but it's like, that doesn't ever work out for me. Oh man, this one was really close. It, me it might still work, but I don't think so. Ah, damn, yeah. What was that? Okay, well, we didn't have enough time anyway. I can't really do anything, you know, when, when she's doing the flying thing with her intro skill, it's like, you're just kind of vulnerable there. It's like, even if you see the attack coming, what are you supposed to do? How was this one so bad? It didn't feel that bad. Ah. What? What is that attack? Man, that one was actually pretty close. I think with this burst, we would do it. And then the next charge attack, yeah. Hmm, five, five seconds. I'm getting into the rhythm of it a bit, but it's still pretty mediocre gameplay here. Oh, this one's gonna be close, bruh. This one's gonna be close. Oh my god! Frame perfect death, Yinlin. Well, he wouldn't have had time anyway, but that was definitely, I think, one of the closest ones. Nah, this one's not going to work either. We're just missing a tiny bit of DPS. That's so annoying. We're gonna, we're gonna suffer it out. Why did Yinlin die? Bro, look at this. 20 seconds left. I think with one more, like, of her burst stuff, that would have worked. I don't know, probably not. Oh, <laughs> this time I didn't even realize we, we were out of time. Not, oh my god, it's like, it's like always the same. I feel like I'm refining and getting a little better with every battle, but I'm not really seeing any progress. Crit, please. Yes. Oh, wait, this one's looking good, dude. This one's looking really good. Oh, no, she doesn't have anything, bro. Oh, is this going to do it? No, hurry, go, go. I need one more. Don't. Oh, okay. Damn. I don't even know if I want to show that. I still feel like I'm playing like complete ass. I don't know. I'm just not in the zone today, I guess. But yeah, I'll show bits and pieces. I think the main thing I had trouble with is, you know, pressing her basic when swapping in instead of E, just again, because I've been playing with Jinchi so much. For this fight in particular, dodging is super important because dodging gives you a lot of concerto energy and you can swap out better. Uh, and also the dude hits like a truck, so you have to. Uh, his attacks aren't that hard to dodge once you get used to them, and I think that's what it really came down to. They are very slow and telegraphed, but sometimes he's just going a little wild. Not anywhere as hard or took nearly as long as doing the monkey here, the level 100s. So what does that mean? Well, it's possible I'm just not that good with her. I did look up some rotations and tried to follow them as best as I could. Basically, after doing intro skill, you do basic attack, skill, and then another basic attack, and that'll give you two charges, you know? And then preferably, you'd swap out, have someone's concerto ready, 
and then just do the same thing again. And then boom, she has her charge attack ready pretty quick. That doesn't work all the time though. There are variables like if your other characters have concert already. Just out of curiosity, I do want to try the other side with Jinchi, Verena, and Yinlin. Uh, we can do that as long as we don't use them for floor one and three on the other side. Yeah, okay, so first three floors uh, was not too bad. So now we're going back to the Verena Yinlin team. And yeah, all the energy works out perfectly. I'm glad I actually tried that once because... I recommended that as a strategy and I'm actually utilizing it because in my opinion, floor four here is a completely different beast than one through three. All right, but let's see how this one goes. I'm hoping it's not that easy, but I'm kind of expecting it to be. Jinchi is better built and has higher talents still, so it's not even a fair comparison. Yeah, I mean, they are giving me a bit of trouble, but mainly just because they are so far away. They like spread apart so much, so I'm wasting a lot of time just running between one and the other. So we do have the boss now, Motorcycle Man. He took zero damage from that uh, blast. I guess he wasn't actually here yet. I feel very scammed. How much does this do? Okay, 100k non-crit, that, that would have been huge. I was wondering if I was maybe just like misremembering how much damage Jinchi does, but no, that would have actually been massive. There's 175. Well, this won't be that strong because we have like no buffs, but uh, <laughs> three stars first try. Uh, okay, again, not that fair of a comparison, and maybe this floor wasn't as hard. I don't know. I do also want to compare raw stats a little bit. So in terms of both attack and crit damage, Chongli has a bit more. Uh, not too much more attack, but like 20 more crit damage. Our Jinchi has nearly 10% more crit rate though, and while it's not going to like change the overall number it just crits or it doesn't in a whole run it obviously makes a difference they are also both s0 but junshi does have a maxed forte circuit uh but then actually only level six liberation and skill so i don't know that might be kind of even actually i think the main issue is the yinlin verena team with Jinchi is incredible the yinlin verena team with Chongli is just the best of what's available right now. And I think that's the main issue. I still think she's a really good DPS, probably like the second best now behind Jinshi. And of course, if you do have the characters like Encore or have your Rover raised for a quick swap team, she definitely becomes better because she frees up these for your Jinchi. I think for a lot of things like overworld and just domains, basically besides the end game content, I do prefer Chongli and her play style because I feel like she can do like good consistent damage, whereas uh, Jinchi just does a lot of burst attacks. So like when I was farming those exiles earlier, I just stayed with Chongli because, you know, she can kill them relatively fast, you know, throw an E in there, a couple basic attacks and they're dead. Whereas with Jinchi, I feel like, like it's a bit slower and then she has like that, you know, animation attack. The blah, 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 blah. Uh, so yeah, I don't think that means much to much people like you can't farm with anyone at the end of the day you know i don't want to speculate about the future but it feels like most of the dps's so far have that one unit that just fits perfectly with them and i don't feel like she really has that yet so i'm just guessing she will get that yinlin is fine but that's just because it's yinlin and, she, and yinlin's op but yeah that'll do it drop a like if you enjoyed see ya